Troy Anthony here with head football coach for the New York Guardians, Kevin Gilbride. Thank you for the time, Coach. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. So, Coach, i got to start this off like I do with everybody. You spent a lot of years dedicated to football. When did you fall in love with the game? Oh, boy. <laughs> As a young kid, uh, my dad was a high school teacher and a coach. A rare combination. He was a math teacher and a football and basketball coach. So, I fell in love with the game. We used to go watch uh, high school games with him when he'd go scout, and nothing was more enjoyable. I'm the oldest of seven brothers and sisters, and my wow. brother and I both would go. And that was a special time. We still talk about it today. So, football was in the home from the beginning? No question about it. Nice. Okay, so... When you were offensive coordinator for the New York Giants, now you're an XFL head coach. What was that transition going from having to prep almost your entire career for OC, now you're a head coach? Well, as you said, I mean, it wasn't just the Giants. It was the Oilers, it was the Jaguars, it was the Steelers, it was the Bills, as well as the Giants. So that's what I'm used to doing. But I did have a chance to be head coach before, both at Southern Connecticut and then at San Diego Chargers. So it's something that I enjoy, but it is different, you're right, because you're not just focused in on your aspect or your component of the, of the team you're, you're responsible for the entire team so i've given up play calling and running the offense and taking direct control of that so that i could oversee everything because i also have some general manager responsibilities as well so i just thought that would be in the best interest of the team that i gave off the play calling to somebody else and i give it to ga Magnus. is there any difference in preparation from the nfl to the xfl just the, the rule differences that accentuate certain things, such as the uh, extra points. So now you have to have additional uh, plays or additional, more volume of red zone and green zone plays, both offensively and defensively. Because every time you get down there and score a touchdown, you've got to go for two, or from the two, or from the five, or from the ten. So you have to have additional plays in the normal amount that you would have. And then, God forbid, you get into the uh, into the overtime period, you got to you're going to win or lose the game based upon your ability to put it in from the five yard line. Yeah, these extra points are truly, truly impressive in the XFL. I mean, it, it pretty much puts an end to ties, at least so far this season. Well, so far, keep our fingers crossed. Keep our fingers crossed. Now, you were offensive coordinator for the Giants, like I mentioned. You seem to utilize the tight end a lot when you were the offensive coordinator for the Giants. Now, in the XFL with Powell and Bibbs, I'm not seeing that as much. Is that part of prob probably an offensive game change, or is it just what we've seen so far this season? Well, again, we've always done, whether, again, you, you Giants, and when I was at the Oilers, we were four wide. So we've done everything. In Jacksonville, we were predominantly four wides and led the league in offense both places. Uh, here, it's just a matter of who's playing well. In fact, last week, we did play a lot of two tights, and that was probably our best running game, and we, by far, and most of those runs came when we had two tight ends in the game. Now, the XFL seems to be a different beast in regards to media, especially with the interviews huh. on the sideline. How do you feel about the interviews? That may be the understatement of the year. It's a little <laughs> bit different beast. Yeah, it's totally different, and, and it uh, can be a little bit intimidating because you're aware of everything that you say is being recorded, at least my headset is, and, and anything that uh, you may do is being uh, viewed with a camera right in your face, and the fact that they have access to you right after something usually something bad is when yeah. they want to speak with yeah. you it's different and some of our players have not responded as well as we would have liked but it's a growing experience for all of us and uh, i'm sure the fans love it that they get a, a peek behind the curtain so to speak yeah speaking of some of those players uh matt mcgoin he actually went down early last week and then you had to go to williams and perez What's the situation with McGoin and his ribs, and will we see Williams and Perez this week? Yeah, we don't know. We're going to play it by ear, but uh, I thought both Marquise and uh, and Luis both had moments where they did some really good things. So Matt, would, except for the the pick he threw, was eight for 11, 114 yards, was playing very well. And then both the quarterbacks came in and moved us up and down the field. We just didn't put it in the end zone until until Luis did it. So uh, all three showed some things that we were very impressed with. It's just a matter of us making the decision, which we won't do probably until game time. In this past week's matchup against the Battlehawks, you guys had a little bit of a tough time down at the goal line. You had the pass interference with McKay, got the fresh four downs. I seen McKay a couple of times on the outside 101, one on one. Is there a reason that he didn't get the jump ball that just wasn't in the play call? No, it's just a matter of what the quarterbacks see. And uh, as you say, there were some chances that we wish in hindsight that we had taken advantage of. Now, going into this week's matchup against the Wildcats, you guys are sitting at 1-2 and two after dropping a couple of Eastern Conference losses. What are some of the keys to victory this week? Well, we got to maintain our poise and uh, you know, maintain our composure in the game, not uh, be our own worst enemies. It's tough enough beating an opponent. And so, uh, and when, you, when you make the mistakes that we made last week or the week before, uh, you're playing yourself as well as the other team. That's too many players to beat. 
All right, coach, I'm gonna give you my flag football highlight tape. If you need a wide receiver 10 on the depth chart, I'm your guy, all right? I can see your size. <laughs> That's not the position I'd be thinking of right now. <laughs> Thank you for your time, coach.